Hi, if you watched my last episode, then you would know that I beat my swing game. And I'm very pleased with it. Mostly because it's still working. So, with that built, I now have baseboards that circle the entire room. Next job then, is to build a board here with the track splits. Track splits, you know who you say. That wasn't in the plan. It wasn't. Things have changed. So let me talk you through what has changed in my plan. As I was working out the inclines to get to the fiddle yard, etc., I realised that although I had a suitable 1 in 60 uh, climb for the majority of the layout, I actually ran into a couple of problems. The first one being that the incline starts here and drops, and it has to drop roughly 7 to 8 centimetres so that this line can pass under this top board here. No problem. Except there is, because the line continues to drop here, it stays, stays level here, drops again here, level here, drops again here. The same with this line dropping all the way around here, you can get to about 22 centimetres space between the top board and the bottom board. That's fine. I've measured it, I've tried it, I can get my hand over the rolling stock, 22 centimetres clearance, not a problem. But there isn't 22 centimetres clearance. Here is only 14 because I dropped it and that is not enough room. So that meant I'd have to make the drop either sharper, which means trains would struggle to climb the inclines, or I'd have to make them longer. Now I could do that. I could start this incline here. It will still take me around the room and it will finish here. And that will drop to roughly around 27 to 30 centimetres, depending on the gradient I use. Which then means this will then have enough clearance if it was 30 centimetres, but also requires these gradients to be adjusted. It's fine, except it's then, I feel, too high for the room. It was always a challenge to try and get the right heights. Now I could lower the baseboards, but then I have the other issue of passing underneath this board. So I went back to the drawing board, had a little think, and thought, how can I improve this? And there is one other factor that's uh, affecting this build. And that's because I went to Wix the other day and I haven't bought wood for the layout in a few years, but my God, did the price shoot up. <laughs> £14 for a 9mm sheet of ply in 4 foot by 2 foot is absolutely extortionate. <laughs> and my plan would require a lot of wood. So, I don't really want to spend all my money on wood. I've decided to make things a little simpler. Okay, so I'll take you through a visual walkthrough of what my idea is. Here we are, we're in the fiddle yard. We're going to come through the fiddle yard, around here, and fiddle yard's going to exit roughly around here. This is going to be a scenic section, and we'll come out to about here, and then as we come along here, we then reach a junction. If we continue along this line here, we're going to go along the east coast main line. And we keep following it, we follow it, we follow it all the way around until it disappears in a tunnel and comes around over the swing bridge and back into the fiddle yard. So that's one part. Now, just above will be the heritage line and that will go around all this area here. And that will sort of mean that this will, won't be massively scenic and I probably will start the fiddle yard roughly around here. Now, I take you back down here to the junction. A couple of lines will come across this way here and then they're going to be split into two parallel branch lines. And as we come across, one line will go this way. And the other line, as it climbs, will go over the top of the East Coast Main Line in the background, round here, and back up this wall. And we keep going all the way until we reach the Heritage Line, where it'll either go around the back or the front, or might do both depending on the type of train. So maybe a passenger train at the front to stop at the station and freight trains to continue round the back until they get into a slightly higher fiddle yard just around here that will sit above, above this fiddle yard, but it won't be the same depth. So, because it's not going to be that much higher, but just out a little bit and just enough that I can get my hand underneath and 
sort any trains out that derail under there. So that's that part. Now I'll take you back over here, back to the junction, back to over here. The other line is gonna curve this way, it's gonna go over the swing bridge, and then it's gonna dip down and come into here, and then along, along the front of the Fibby Yard, I'm gonna have some sort of scenic area, which probably be a quarry or some sort of goods yard or something, but just somewhere to store some extra trains and run some other things. So that is the plan. I'm hoping that it's not going to uh, require as much wood as the original plan. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build cross here for that section and this baseboard here, I'm going to flip it over because I'm going to make uh, this area where a river is. So that can then have a track and can cut to the board and represent a river. I do want a viaduct, but at the moment with everything, that could be just a bridge too far. Right, here we are then. I have flipped this board over, uh, as you can see, and that will stay like that until I determine where the river is going to go, etc. And then here is the first piece for the quite long bit of uh, area. In fact, I reckon it's roughly about nine foot, this wood. But it's um, done in what is called an Elgerda. Um, so it's a piece of wood, screw to a piece of wood. And then as we go along, you can see the joins are in different places. And it's got a small amount of flexibility in it. And I will probably put a leg in the middle, but otherwise that is very strong. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see why people go for that and the benefits of it. Uh, so that's one there. I'm going to put another one over here. Uh, I need to get the drawers out before I do that because otherwise they will never come out ever again without being chopped apart. Not that they're in great condition anyway, but I mean, that's how they end up in here. Um, and then I'm going to leave a space here so I can pop up there and reach into that corner. I can just about reach, but that requires leaning over this bit here. And obviously with the scenery and that on, reaching over there is going to result in things getting broken. So that's the plan, I'll carry on with it. Right then, I have installed the second girder and then there's a couple of legs in the middle here just to add strength. They weren't too bad, they didn't bow too much. Um, they're quite strong, but you know, just that additional support is always helpful. Now, it's not an illusion, from here, down this end, it does get more narrow until it gets to about one foot wide at this point. And that's because I tried matching the width here to the other end, but when I tried to crawl underneath and test that I could get up in this gap, it was a bit of a struggle uh, and I barely fit through. Um, so I've made this area wider so that I can get my body through there in case there's any derailments or anything in the corner. I mean, at, at the moment I could just reach over, but that means leaning on the scenery. So I don't want to do that. So I want to pop up there. What I might do, is make removable scenery here so that this whole area is covered in like one big scene and then I can remove that scenery, pop up if there's a problem, sort it out and then go back down and put it back on. But I'll think about that in the future. So yeah, they does get more narrow. I don't think it's gonna affect my plan too much. I hope not. Um, and then, yeah, so that's them in place. And so what I need to do for the track bed on this is you just, for patterns across there and then to match heights. So if I want to match it the same heights here for what we're considering to be a river coming through here at some point, um, just some risers and cleats just to hold the track bed at the right height. So that's that. I mean, for now, pretty much done until I start working on the actual track bed and the track itself. Um, so I suppose the next job is to go around on the side and start building some track that go to the bottom there. But we'll see. With these built, I've been having to think about the rest of the layout, how I'm going to do it. And I've kind of realised that I've sleepwalked myself into a bit of a trap here. Because I've changed my mind, and this is no longer going to be the spiddle yard, the solid top baseboards aren't going to work for me. Uh, and that's because I want the scenery to rise and fall. Um, I did consider just keeping it uh, you know, solid top and flat. But when I look at photos of railways, they do tend to be, even if it's only like a couple of feet, um, most photos I've been looking at seem to be elevated above the rest of the land. You know, when it's passing through farmer's fields and that, it's just that little bit higher. Um, and so I want to represent that in what I model on this. So I'm going to have to retrofit these boards um, and, you know, 
amend them and adjust them so that it works. So I'm going to walk around the room, talk you through the issues and how I think I'm going to get around it. Okay, so firstly is the swing gate. It's taken me ages to build this. It works. I'm very pleased with it. It still swings. It doesn't come out. And I'm happy with it. If I decide to adjust, the swing gate has to stay as it is. Otherwise, the whole thing would probably have to be rebuilt. Um, and that took a lot of time and energy to do that. So I'm, I'm not willing to do that. So I think here, this top will just be unscrewed. And then I will just use um, battens to hold the track bed a little bit higher and maybe put a few more battens across just to support things. And I will probably more than likely do the same there. So they'll become open top baseboards. And then the framework will stay where it is. And then I will clad round it later um, to match it all in. Come around to this side. This is obviously where the filly yard is going to be. And the issue here is Firstly, this board is attached to this and this holds this in place. Um, so I've got to work out a way of getting this higher without affecting this. Got an idea, a couple of ideas. Um, so firstly, I could keep the frames where they are. They're screwed to the wall, they've got the legs. I can just take the solid top off, get some more battens and just raise the board uh, onto a slightly higher frame uh, and have it higher that way and I can do that all along however I think that's quite costly and would use a lot of wood I think the best thing to do here is to detach it from the wall remove the legs cut new legs at a higher position and just lift all these boards up I need to work out how to join this together but again I think I've got an idea of what I'll do here just as long as this one doesn't move because if that moves you will move that, which will move that, and then they take it all out of alignment. So that's really important to keep that as it is. So yeah, I think that's the best way to get around the filly yard is just taking these legs off, new higher legs, drill it back into the wall at the higher position. And I'll do that all the way around to this corner here. Round here, I think I will just take the tops off the framework. Now, the problem here is that it's all made of ply. This is nine mil ply framework and it's very strong as a box when you take this part off it becomes weak so i'm going to have to take this off strengthen what's inside i will probably add additional battens and then make all this open top baseboard as well that will then allow me to have higher uh, a higher railway line for better scenery and have bridges going under the railway or over the railway etc things like that so that's what i intend to do uh, it's a bit of a pain because obviously, <laughs> you know, I thought about that in the first place. Wouldn't have wasted me time, I suppose, doing this. But live and learn. And that's usually how I build, end up building model rally anyway. Changing my mind every five seconds. So I'll have a look at this board for starting first. And because of my considerations with it affecting the gate, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm not going to unscrew it and make it higher. I am going to do only on this one, take the top off get some battens and then make the top higher than the frame so then the frame can stay where it is which means it will stay attached to that which won't affect the swing gate um so it's kind of like an open top baseboard with one giant piece of ply on the top of it so again okay, the top is off and this is what i mean about the framework you can see that it's very wobbly without that top holding the strength there so i will have to make uh anything that's going to become open top a lot stronger with this plywood here we are then this is the first of the fiddle yard baseboards amended and as i said this is the one i've decided to just take the top off and then just raise it with some other wood it's definitely not the way to go this has taken a lot of time and effort and is definitely more costly in use of materials if i just come underneath here you can see I'll show you there i've got batten work to support the wood because i no longer have this frame to hold it i've got these battens in various places supporting the top board and then I've had to use some extra additional ply just to make the fascia board to go around the edge. Now I've left this gap open and as you can see why, that's because this is where the line that I've decided is going to diverge off on the board behind me. It's going to come through, so it's going to come over on here. Maybe not quite here, but this is just a placeholder just to give you an idea. 
and it's going to pop underneath the fiddle yard. So East Coast Main Line will go on the top. This will go underneath. This will pop out here, and then we'll have some something here at Mermy, more stations, uh, quarry. I don't know, but something. That's the plan anyway. So that's all that done. Um, the rest of the boards, as you can see, I've removed two of them at least. So I'm just gonna cut new legs. I'm gonna raise them up and attach them to the wall as I would done previously, but just have them higher. And then over here, the other thing I want to talk about is when I took this top off, this was actually part of the structure that stopped the gate moving. So once this came off the gate, uh, it could pull on here a little bit, just a little bit, but it made this uh, out of line. So in the end, I had to cut a piece of wood to fit in this gap, to wedge it against the wall, and then just put a new bit of wood here, just to anchor it all in place. And that stops it moving, uh, it keeps the gate solid, and it's not relying on this anymore. So that's, I suppose, the harder bit done for now. Move on to the easy bit, cut some legs, put them into the wall, and work my way around the room. So I've just taken a pause from doing the baseboard tops and building the storage underneath uh, as part of my plan. So these are just a couple of shelving units that I've just built from OSB board. The bottoms are from off cuts of 18 mil board that I had left when I'd uh, redone this floor, as are the shelves. And then I've just bought some leather mill just to build the rest of the frame. Um, it's not the prettiest wood in the world, but it will do the job and I'm just gonna paint it up and then, uh, I mean, originally I was going to have doors, but someone has suggested just putting blackout curtains in front, which are a lot cheaper. And the cost of wood, I think I might go with that. So that's the plan. They're on casters. Not the best cases in the world. I think they need some uh, WD-40 on them because they don't run very well. But um, yeah, that's how my storage is going to be underneath the layout. Right then, I'm going to apologise for the continuity of the video because I can't actually remember what the last thing I recorded was. Um, I mean, I could go back and look. But that would require effort. I believe I was showing you that I was building these cabinets and now they're all painted um, and they've come out quite nicely. Uh, I managed to ruin my trainers when I did it. These are one of my better pairs of trainers and when I was working on it my foot had got underneath without me realising and the train is now ruined. Never mind. So um, I'm not trying to flex here or anything or show off my collection. I'm just trying to show you the, the reason why I built these shelves and what I wanted them for. So it is to store all my rolling stock and low coats, etc. And that's because uh, they were being kept in these 62 litre tubs. And they come in like threes when you buy them. Uh, and they're really useful for storing model railway items. Um, but not so much if you want to access them. So, you know, if I wanted something in, out of this box, I'm going to have to get this one down and I have to dig around and... So the whole point of this is for easy access, so I can actually reach stuff. Now I've got a bit of overspill here. Um, I mean, it's okay like that, but I will probably build another unit. Um, I also need to put something in the middle to strength because they've bowed a little bit in the week or so that have been out here just from the weight. So I'll just have to do something about that. Um, but yeah, I probably will just build one more just to take the remainder of the rolling stock that's out of there. And then I can use this to store other things like I have over here with like my scraps box and that. So... That's as far as I'm going to go with the woodwork for now, because I want to start working on the track plan. So I have some track, it's all over here. And I was quite fortunate because I went to the Princess Risborough show the other day and on their second hand table, they had lots of points and track at really, really good prices. So I got that for a tenner, which I think is five, five or six lengths there. Even at five, that's two pound a piece. And uh, I was in a model shop yesterday, it was four pound 60, so that's less than half the price. I'm not complaining. Um, and then, point wise, I got these. Uh, they came bunched together. 40 pound, I think it was. Yep, 40 pound for, off the top of my head, I think it was, it was either six or eight, but it was a good deal. And then even better were these curved points, which, uh, there we are, picked up for £25 for one, two, three, four, five. There's a sixth one somewhere for six of them. That's right, yeah, there were six curves and eight of the others. I think that's an absolute bargain. They're electro frog points, um, and I'm going to use them in my fiddle yard. So, this is where the fiddle yard will start. 
And that's why I wanted the curve points. I could curve into the fiddle yard and, you know, not waste space over here with a points ladder. Um, because it doesn't matter how long the room is. As soon as you start putting points in, it starts eating into your fiddle yard. Um, so it's trying to find the best way to maximise storage, um, you know, and, and not minimise the length of train. So I've got them. I've got some other points left over from the years when I've been buying stuff and collecting bits and bobs. They're all odds and ends. Over here, I have the dreaded, well, these are the Pico ones. The Hornby ones have just been banished. Um, these are the Pico set track curve points that are really useful for building fiddle yards because of their size and shape, etc. But whenever I to use them, doesn't matter what gauge, if it's 009, N gauge, OO, something always derails on them. So they're over here as a last resort because I want to try and avoid them and I will probably use them on the heritage line storage yards instead um, where derailments are less of a concern to me. Um, so that's where they'll stay. I think I've got plenty of points here. So I'm just going to play around at this end, then go down the other end and try and find the best track. I've been playing with the point work and I have something that I think is going to work. Um, so let me just talk you through it. In fact, I'll flip the camera view over and we'll go into uh, Google Earth mode and we can look at the track that way. We'll go into Google Earth mode and for the purpose of talking about this video yard, I'm just going to say that this side is the down road and this side is the up road. So over here will be the scenic side. This will be code 75 track. Um, I would go one code 100, to be honest, if I could, but I've, I've invested quite a bit into code 75 over the years. And it's just one of those things I just have to grin and bear it, but I think I've made a bit of a rod for me and back in that the track laying skills of mine are not the best and code 75 can punish you um, as I found in the past, but I'll just have to get around it i suppose and just learn how to cope with it anyway it'll be code 75 track scenically comes to the code 100 for the fiddle yard and here we've got the double slip and the purpose of the double slip is with this point arrangement any train coming on the down road will be able to reach any of the roads in the fiddle yard and any train in the fiddle yard can leave from any road to reach the up road and the reason I've done that is because I want to run the layout in two ways. Firstly, your traditional kind of exhibition style of procession of trains. You'd have a load of trains stored in the down yard, a load of trains stored in the up yard, and they'd all run one at a time around the layout, and you can just watch them go one by one by one. And that's one way to enjoy the layout. And then secondly, I want to be more of an intense session. I'd use the roads, uh, pretending they are the rest of the world. And then, for example, I'd run a train that's going to York, into one of these sidings, hold it here for a little while, and then eventually it would come back out that way. It came, uh, as almost if it was returning from York, and running it in a sort of, you know, prototypical style. So that's the idea of that junction there. And I've got a similar setup down the other end, which I'll talk about in a minute. So if you look at the point work, you'll notice that the set track curves are indeed in here. I try to avoid them, but they are just too damn useful. Um, even though I do have trouble with them, I'm just going to have to learn to get around it, find ways uh, and make sure that they do work for me. I'm considering possibly going out and getting the Pico, I think the Unifrog version of them now exists. But we'll see. We'll see how I get on. It's a fiddle yard, so it's not the end of the world if these need to come out and be replaced by something. You know, I'm not going to be destroying any scenery if I need to take anything out. So there's a set there and then there's another set over here. And this is the 12th road. So there'll be 11 through roads. And then this 12th road here uh, goes back here all the way up to the wall. And that's the reason that's not a through road because obviously the wall's in the way. Um, so that'll just be a sort of head shunt, I suppose, maybe for kickback sidings that these points are here. This one's just representing what's going to go there. We'll just have a couple of kickback sidings going around here. Maybe as far as ever. We'll see how far we get scenically. But um, I don't see any harm with lining them up with roughly about here. If scenically things are going to be just over there, and that'll probably give me a nice little room for probably probably four, four or five coach trains. Probably get a Voyager around that curb, I reckon. Um, but that's the plan for that end. 
down the other end then. Set up a little bit already. Uh, and just making sure things aren't too tight. They are close, but I think, um, you know, this, this track's just got a little bit of a bend in it. But as long as I get it all straightened out, I should be okay. Um, so it's mostly built of a ladder following the shape of the board. Um, it's just had to go with what I'd already built. And it works, I suppose, because, you know, whatever we're building there probably wouldn't have wasted a bit of uh, wood anyway. So it's not too bad. And this is the setup for this end. They're just all through roads here. There's no kickback sidings or anything like that. Um, partly because I've run out of points and partly because the space is obviously a lot tighter on this side with how narrow the board is. I know it gets wider by the end, which is quite fortunate for the fan style of the fiddle yard. Um, but yeah, I probably could have done with that space. But if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have the swing gate, which gets there, because if that sticks out, and it, as I found the other day, I had these storage boxes here, and that stuck out a bit, and that made getting in and out of the room really awkward, like, just by being out, just by that couple of uh, centimetres. Which uh, it's also taught me that when I do eventually build a line through here, I need to make sure the gate shuts up to this point, so the track's gonna have to come out here somewhere. But that's something to worry about in the future. Anyway, the gate is open. I do need to shut it just to show you the rest of the setup. So again, as I said, it's gonna be a feed system in which the, got that point the wrong way now. Trains come in this way on the up line and then come into here and then there's access to any line they like through the point work so it can reach all 11 roads. So again, we can have a procession of trains or run it more like a prototypical style of running. Just got to work out how to get diesels from one end to the other. Uh, and then we come back out this road or even one of the top sidings you can come out through these points here and then cross these points here, which will be on the swing gate. And then we'll go out into the scenic world around here. So that is the fiddle yard. That's my plan for it. Um, I'm hoping it's going to work. If I can think of an idea of how to change the diesels from one end to the other, I will uh, certainly consider a way of doing that. But for now, that's how things are going to be. I'm going to dig out the rest of my Code 100 um, track. Definitely got some streamlined somewhere and uh, start laying things out and getting this fiddle yard down. Well, uh, I went looking for the streamlined track and I was pleasantly surprised because it turns out I've actually been acquiring quite a bit of track over the years um, and I didn't realise I had this much, um, which is good because I didn't realise I'd need this much. Um, this is all the track now sort of laid out. I've got that little gap there, but I do have some leftover pieces here filling in any spaces. So this is roughly, very roughly, how the fiddle yard will look. Um, I think that's going to be pretty good. That's going to be a pretty good size. That's going to hold um, some decent length trains in there um, and a couple of the smaller trains can obviously join up together. So I reckon I could probably get, what, about 15... 15 to 20 trains, depending on the size, because there's 11 through roads. Some of the through roads are really big. Obviously, I've got some big modern freight trains, but I've got smaller stuff like two car DMUs and stuff like that. And I say I've got the kickback signings over there. So, yeah, I reckon I could probably get a whole, whole 15 to 20 trains in here, um, which is what I wanted really, because I've got a number of models and I want them out and I want to be able to run them. Uh, so, yeah, this is looking all right. Definitely going to start. Uh, laying this out now, wiring it all up, getting it all ready. Uh, I have to find some point motors. I do have some somewhere. Now, some of these points are Electro Frog, some of them are Insul Frog. Um, these ones I acquired the other day, they're Electro Frog. I say these, well, these ones are going to be Insul Frog. So I will dig out the point motors. I think they are the seat style point motors. I've got loads of them. And uh, I will use them for now and maybe upgrade to something a little bit better later on. But for the time being, that'll do me. Just to get things going. But yeah, I'm uh, quite pleased I'm actually getting somewhere with a layout. And this is just the fiddle yard. 
I've not even considered how I'm going to do the rest of it yet. But the foot yard really is the most important part of your layout. And it's the bit I hate because I never get it right. So if I get the real foot yard right first, I can concentrate on the rest of the layout afterwards. Right, I've dug out me point motors and uh, I've laid them where they need to go, um, which also has helped me address some issues such as this set of points here. Now, I think I definitely will change these out for a right hand point. But at the moment, if I was to install that, it goes across the baseboard joint. So that would be most certainly an issue. Um, I've got a couple of choices. I can either do a surface mounted point motor or alternatively, I could just push this track back just a little bit towards the wall, just to give it enough clearance there. Which also then adds, obviously, a little bit of extra room in the foot yard, in all the foot yard roads. Um, but does eat into what I was planning to have around here. I think I was trying to get two sidings to the back here. So it's a bit of a, you know, what, uh, half a dozen of one and six of the other sort of situation. Um, I'm gonna have a little think about that. Um, so control wise for the moment I'm just going to build a standard DC panel just to control the points um, and I will probably add additional wires to the track and then like sort of separate them with insulated joiners um, with the potential of making some sort of block detection in the future so at least they're all prepped up wired up I've got a couple of wires on them and then whatever you know I need to do to adapt them um, I don't hopefully won't have to lift anything. I can just use what's already there. You know, I may need to make a couple of cuts in the track or something with a razor saw on top, but apart from that, hopefully that'll work. So that's that's the plan anyway. Just a standard panel, just to get things started, um, because I've had a little look, um, and I'm not entirely sure what equipment I'd want to buy and how much I'd need, but whatever I do choose looks like a very expensive route. So it's not something I really want to invest in right now. I just want to get some trains running. Now, I don't use that fancy track planning software all the kids are talking about. Uh, I'm very much old school of drawing things on a piece of paper and then trying to physically lay it out and realise it doesn't work. Um, and this is what's happened here. This uh, filly yard uh, looked all right when I laid the points out, but I hadn't joined them together. And by doing that, the points are all slightly sort of bending that way to suit the narrative so to speak so that they would line up with these roads however as i've started putting the um, fish plates on and joining them all up the curvature has got a little bit lost in places particularly over here and the points were actually going off in this direction into the wall so i've had to correct that and i've done that by swapping out one set of points and putting in this y point here which will now go around to the dead end siding through there and I measured that, that's about eight foot. So that's actually a pretty good size. Um, I've got these points here. I might have them in, I might not, just again for the kickback. Or I might just stick to the plain eight foot siding just because that's quite useful. But I'll think about that. I'm in no rush to lay anything there just yet. Um, then these points have all just been adjusted so that these roads now line up better with these four roads here. And to do that, I've had to just add a little set track curve in here just to bring these points round to a better angle so that you know trains aren't running into the wall so that's all the points now joined together with the uh, rail joiners or fish plates whatever you like to call them um everything's held i'm happy with how everything is um i've got a set track point here just to represent the point that i need to put in and replace although no, no, it's a bit rubbish there, actually. I was going to say I was going to use this one for the... No, no, that lines up like that. Maybe. I have a set track point that... Because this is, what is this, a left hand. I do have a right hand set track point somewhere. I might just try that and just see if that will work out better. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm going to start uh, fixing these points to the baseboard. OK, let me talk you through how I install my point motors. Now, these are the PM... One and PM2, so this one is a PM2 because it doesn't have the spring and washer in the middle there to change the polarity on the point. Uh, so I install these points by building a jig. Anyone that's had any experience with these know that it can be quite difficult to install, especially if you just try drilling a hole in the baseboard and then threading the tie bar through the middle and then trying to screw these in position. 
because if you get it slightly wrong, it won't throw properly. So I built a jig because it makes life a lot easier uh, when it comes to installing these point motors. So this is just made from a bit of plastic card uh, to cut the size, drill a hole directly in the middle. Then you thread this, uh, say with this point motor, thread the uh, bar through the middle so that the plastic card lines up with your holes. Then mark out where your holes go. Um, remember that the point motor goes on the baseboard that way. So, and as they are opposite to each other, you get them in the wrong place, you'll have the holes in the wrong position and then just drill them out. And that's the jig. It goes in that way. <clears throat> then you see that upside down, the holes are in the same position. So the point is centered. I've marked out where it's gonna go. I've used my white paint pen just to go around the edge of the sleepers. Um, because obviously the paint is black. And uh, now I'm just gonna drill a small hole in the middle. There we go. Right, done that. Thread this through. No, it won't go through, just to embarrass me. There we go. Oh dear, I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, that, that's, that's enough. As long as it holds it in position. And then just angle your uh, bit of plastic card marker with the sleepers so they're parallel. That way you know that the, you know, the uh, tie bar is going to throw properly. And then it's just a case of marking out. So you can either just get a pencil or just get the drill in the middle. Just make a little mark on the baseboard. One there. Now there's a sleeper right there, which is a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to just... Oh, I'll sort that out in a second. You don't want to watch me do that. I'm going to just pull everything apart, not the camera if I try to do that. Anyway, I've marked that out. And then what I'll do is I'll take that off. I'll drill through from the top. So I'll just, I mean, I could just do that here, actually. Obviously, I have to remove the other point, the other side, I'm going to go for the sleeper. Um, and that's how it's done. Now, there's drill holes there. Uh, the only other thing I have to do is I lift this point up, I widen this hole in the middle to about six millimeter to allow the point to throw. Uh, then I can go underneath and then just screw this in with the holes that are pre drilled from the top of the board. And I know that everything's going to be in alignment. Well, here we are. The points are laid and in place. Uh, I still need to attach the motors and wire it all up, but otherwise... The first pieces of track are down. So, I'm going to leave this at that for this video, uh, because, quite frankly, who wants to watch me lay a fiddle yard? That's going to be boring. I'm going to come back when it's laid down and take the layout further from there. Well, I hope this video has been useful to you and I appreciate it if you have got to the end because it's been a bit of a long one and it's not the most exciting, but if you're, you know, interested in the thought process and how layouts go together and not just the running of trains, then, you know, I thank you for watching and getting this far. Um, I appreciate it's not everyone's cup of tea and most people just like to watch trains run round. We will get there eventually and then the track's going down, so we're getting there. Um, but if you could comment, like, subscribe, any of those things, it really helps boost the channel, helps other people follow the channel. And hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. You're still here. Why not try another of my videos?